What is that? I don't want to put my hand in that. You're kidding me. Why was the engine struggling so much? Yeah, it's all over the actual propeller itself. I'm Ben. I'm Emily. And this is our fairy friend, Alan. We all live full time on board our 56 foot narrowboat. Join us on our travels as we explore the UK canals and rivers. So today's Thursday. We'll be leaving Nantwich. We'll be turning at Hurlston Junction towards the Hanglockland Canal. Okay, it's all written down here, everything we're gonna do. But first we're gonna stop, we're gonna get some water, we're gonna hopefully find some recycling, some bins, and then yeah, we'll be on our way. Some... But everything seems to be good with the service, doesn't it? You had so to... far we've had the engine warming up for about 20 minutes, so that's given me the confidence to think it won't just turn off, as it did when we first turned it on, because we hadn't put the stopcock back to go on the fuel. <laughs> so just switched off. Got your coffee there, your decaf. Decaf, I'm on decaf. Right, let's go. So today we thought we'd talk about money a little bit. There seems to be the odd person who thinks that our lifestyle is funded by our parents and that our parents bought our boat or something like that. So we're gonna discuss it and just you know, tell you a bit more about how we fund ourselves on the boat. Yeah. Break the myths, answer some questions. of our videos um, my little vegetables I make with faces on they're very silly um, so I've been running that business for about eight years that's all on Etsy and I sell to some shops as well wholesale so yeah I've been running that for eight years and I guess I was sort of saving up for a house really for a deposit we were first-time buyers so we were trying to buy this cottage in Scotland and it was all going through fine and everything nearly bought it basically and then we found out it had really, really bad damp problem. That house went down the pan, um, but we realised that I'd be able to buy a boat outright with no debt. So basically a house for us, yeah, with no debt. That's what we ended up doing. Whereas if we'd have bought the house, it would have been yeah, so obviously if a 30-year yeah. repayment on yeah, it so in if debt. We, we actually looked at a few houses uh, not all in Scotland, we looked at houses in West Yorkshire where we were living at the time but the price bracket that we were looking at we were talking about really small closed in terrace houses with uh, no grass, no front or back garden and yeah, the, and the, even those houses were pretty damp as well and, it, and they weren't cheap either, really the lifestyle that this is, uh, is provided us is, is in my mind, for us, what suits us is superior for a fraction of the price. This is Nantwich over here. It's like the, the town centre is sort of that way. So we're reversing into the water point. The fellow is just leaving. Emily's pulling it in, I mean, with her mega strengths. Okay, so we're getting water. So, Benny. <laughs> so people wonder, how do we make our money? Well, the pet vegetable business that Emily's just been telling you about, the one that she spent eight years doing, she still does now, now I've got involved, now that we're on the move, I've stopped doing the work that I was doing before. So the work I was doing before was, I was working as an extra on film sets. I also had a vegan burger stall and I was working in a cafe and all sorts of different things. The music doesn't really make any money. But now we both together do the pet vegetable business. It was a fly in my ears. And that works from the boat, we can take it where we want. All we need is a post office and we need to be able to get the supplies that we use for the business. Now that our YouTube's got a bit bigger, we do get some income from that. And the money that we get from YouTube and the buy me of coffees, thank you everybody for that. We use it, we put it straight back into the boat for maintenance, for fuel, for anything boat related. We put that aside and we keep it for those kind of jobs. Yes, yeah, so we basically 
live off tiny little vegetables with faces on. It's ridiculous, I know, but you know, it makes it a living, so what are you gonna do? Right, we've got water, we're off. So next stop is gonna be the junction onto the, the Hancock, Hancockland. Oh, the toast is still on. I've just taken the toast out, it's fine. Oh wow, look at this horse guy. How much do boats actually cost? You can get boats for like £2,000 can't you but they'll be just made of holes and probably sunk but I guess something that's 15000 you might have something decent that will float and that it still need a lot of work wouldn't it I think. Yeah well, the, the length plays a big part of that because yeah. for 15000 you might get an okay boat that's like 20 something foot 25 or something, yeah. foot or but yeah it's just the um the hull and the work that you end up doing afterwards does that add up to you might as well have spent more money on a boat anyway because yeah you can get like a, a nice boat that's like a project boat and, and then spend 20 grand doing it up and then you've got a really lovely boat i think sort of 25 to 35 you can get something a decent ish length that's pretty nice it's livable probably needs a bit of TLC a bit of work um, if you're looking at like 35 to 45 it's probably even obviously a bit better less work that needs to be done on it definitely can just move on straight away anything above 45 I mean well anything above 40 really it's just gonna be pretty good isn't it yeah some llamas were there llamas yeah oh what I missed the llamas our reference for these kind of costs is from when we were shopping around for boats in 2021. Yeah. But we've been told that the prices have gone up since the virus and all that sort of thing. So I guess it's more expensive now than it was before then. So when we bought our boat, I think it was just on the cusp of when um, the prices were just sort of skyrocketing. So yeah, I don't know. It was. I think we paid a bit more than maybe we would have done otherwise for our boat it can vary so much you might find a really amazing boat for really cheap or you might spend a lot on a boat and it not be very good it really just depends so there's not really any rule for it it's not like buying a car or a van or something is it it's... it seems like everyone is totally different as yeah well. so yeah age length condition it all just totally varies so it's a bit of a hard one to answer that really We didn't realise it, we were actually at the junction already. <laughs> and there's a boat coming down, yay, that's great. So that means we can just go straight in. So because of the nature of the turn, there was nowhere for one of us to get off. So Emily is getting off a set of ladders at the furthest end of the boat there. the last one I think for this set and then we've got another two I think.
So the next bit we're going to talk about is like the cost of living on a boat. So we're not going to talk about food or anything like that because it's the same for if you live on a in a house. Um, this is rough. Obviously, it changes for everyone. First thing is the boat license. So for us, it's about a thousand pounds a year, isn't it? Just under a thousand pounds. I've just gone for a tunnel. Are you waiting for me? So, so. Yeah, it's your turn now, Benny. I've gone for a flipping tunnel. Like that. Oh yeah, this is quite. Double bridge. We're back. The phone ran out of battery and it all got a bit tight and narrow. Right, so. Costs of living on a boat, Benny. Next one is BSS, which is a safety certificate. So that's something that you only have to have done once every four years. And I think it costs us about £140. So it's not that much really. But obviously, if there's any work that needs doing, that's, I don't know how much that would be. There's some really tight, cornery, bridgey things on this canal already. That was all a bit much trying to uh, drive the boat and give some facts. So I'll do some now while I'm doing this lock. This is kind of like our energy costs. So we've taken the numbers that we spent last for like the last year. So wood is mostly free because we forage for wood. We've got a little chainsaw. So yeah, we, we try and just use free wood. Coal was £317 for a year. Obviously we don't use it at all through the summer months and then we use, I think one 25 kilo bag sort of lasts us about three days, I think. Electricity, that's free from the solar, but obviously in the winter months when there's less solar, we have to have the engine running. Right, I'm just gonna do a bit more of this. As a rule, roughly you use about one litre per hour of running the engine. So that depends on how much your diesel is. At the moment, it, I think it's, hold on a minute, let me just put this one. I think diesel is about 150 a litre at the moment. So through the summer months, we've not had the engine on once to charge the batteries. We've had it on for moving the boat, clearly, but we haven't had to run it at all for charging the batteries yet so water right our boat license covers water bins it's like council tax water bins waste disposal that kind of thing so that's what we mentioned earlier that's what our boat license is that's the thousand pounds a year diesel so obviously that depends on how far you go we have spent 360 pounds on diesel in the last year but we've still got nearly a full tank of diesel so it, it doesn't really use much diesel. We don't have a diesel heater, so we don't use it for that. So roughly, if we add everything up, so it's roughly 12,760 pounds a year. So that comes to 230 pounds a month. About 115 pounds each. Obviously, that doesn't include any unexpected costs. Recently, our drive plate needs to be replaced. And that cost us nearly a thousand pounds for that. Well, it was the drive plate and the engine mount snapped, so we had to get that fixed. So that was like a thousand pounds that we just, you know, that we weren't expecting. And that's what happens, you know, we have to, occasionally we have to pay for things like that, boat, boat maintenance, really. Another cost would be servicing the boat. That costs about, well, we've just done it ourselves and it's cost us about £120. Um, there's another expense. So every four years, we have to black the boat, which means taking it out of the water, scraping it down, getting all the gunk and gack and old paint and stuff off the, the hull of the boat, and then repainting it with bitumen paint. Some people use two pack epoxy. Um, we use bitumen. We did it ourselves. And I think that cost us about six, 600 pounds, maybe 700 pounds. But if you get someone else to do it for you, it can cost about a thousand. But that's once every two to four years. I think we're gonna do it every two years. So again, it depends how much you spend on that and depends how often you do it.
so behind me are some boats with long-term moorings by the looks of things and this is one cost that we don't have because we're continuous cruisers. A mooring can cost anything from £50 a month, say if you've got quite a basic towpath type mooring with no electricity or anything, you've just got the space to moor up. Or you could pay up to thousands of pounds if you're somewhere like London with all of the mod cons and all that. Or if you're in a marina it could cost maybe £500 a month. But it does, it does vary a lot, but it's just another cost that you can put on the list. Oh, enjoying the Kangoklan so far. Right, we've got three more locks to do. I'm just coming up to one now and a boat's just come out. So the gates are open, which is great. And then, yeah, we'll be at, we'll be at Rembury, which is where we're gonna stop for a few days. Something's happened. The boat's not moving. We think there's something around the prop, but something is not right. We're going incredibly slow. We're not really moving at all. So this is how we get to our weed hatch. Alan, don't go too far. We're only stopping for a minute, hopefully. Always makes me worry taking this thing off. Mmm. That looks mingy. Why is it like that? What's all the black? Man, that is, that's like right wrong. Like it's if like you put your arm in there. Black sludge. Do you think there's something around the prop and it's like melting or something? Look at that! That's it's not water. Um, what is that? I don't want to put my hand in that. You're killing me. Um, I'll put my hand in it then. It smells oily. What on earth is going on? This is very worrying. There's like loads of weird grease stuff coming out. What on earth is going on? Ah, do you know what I saw when we were going through those locks where they were doing that work? There was like weird pieces of like black something and there was loads of like this kind of thing happening. I mean, I don't have a clue what that could be, but I wonder if some of it has got caught round our prop. This is worrying. I don't like this. Can't work out why this stuff's happening. Alan is having a nice time though. He doesn't seem to care. Autumnal walk for you. You going in? Oh, Benny, I'm sorry. It's disgusting, it won't even come off. My finger, what the little the bit that I've got. What the hell is that? We haven't got any long gloves, or I don't know, you could like cling film around your arm. I don't know if you can see. Look, it's like tar in there. What on earth? Oh, that is bad. Can you feel anything? Can you feel anything around the prop? No. Really? So what on earth does that mean? What is going on? <sighs> it looks like bitumen to me. It looks like what we blacked the boat with, doesn't it? Why was the engine struggling so much? That, sludge. That is all over the prop. Yeah, it's all over the actual propeller itself. Like, look, there's this stuff that keeps coming up like this. So weird. What on earth is it? Those wipes better get that off you. <laughs> uh, what do you want to do then? Shall I just put it back on? Maybe. Oh, Alan, you're so cute. You make everything better. Um, maybe we'll just... I don't know. Do you... The thing is, it just the engine sounded like it was really struggling, didn't it? It wasn't it just like it sounded. Well, it wasn't working properly, was it? Nope. 
It's like gluey, isn't it? It's bizarre. I reckon we put this back together and stick it in reverse and see what happens, see if it pushes anything out. I should probably have tried that before. Let's get this off you first, shall we? Well, there could be worse places to break down. But it is five o'clock, so the sun has started to set. This might have to be where we stop for the night, I think. Okay, so the plan is put it all back together, just stick it in reverse, stick it in forwards while we're moored up, and just. I don't know, just see. I oh, know, suck the tummy in. <laughs> These lovely boaters came back to see if we were okay. Thank you. What are your Dun names? Duncan. Ali. Duncan and Ali. Thank you no, very much. No problem. <laughs> we're going to see if it's working now. What happens? Right, okay. That sounds alright, doesn't it? That sounds normal. It's definitely getting dry here. Yeah. Look at all the stuff coming up. Can you see it? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon? Does that seem better? Yeah, it seems like it's got way more pull than it did a second ago. Ugh. Ah, interesting. Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if... whatever it was, you obviously. Yeah. It was enough to sort it. So. Yeah, maybe just stopping it and letting it cool down it's just all dripped off a bit or something should we keep going yeah. <laughs> thanks guys no you're really yeah. very kind lovely to meet you as well <laughs> what do you reckon i'm tired i want a bath it's half past five uh, what should we do should we just should we just stay here for the night Look at little Alan down there. <laughs> oh, she's so cute, just poking out like that. Alan likes it here. Alan likes, very, really likes it here. Yeah, she's even had a wee outside, which she never does. Right, okay, so we're putting stuff away and we're going to just go in and, yeah, have a sleep. I absolutely hate that this stuff is in the water, but there is literally nothing we can do because it's up inside the boat, like in the weed hatch. And I think it's something we've picked up from those locks that we saw. Okay, right, let's go inside, yeah? Just to finish off, I hope we've answered some questions and busted some myths about money and where we <laughs> get our money from and how we bought the boat and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure how good we are at doing things in a nice uh, explanatory way, but we've done our best. Good morning. Hello. It was actually a really nice spot to stop last night. Had a good sleep, didn't we? It's a peaceful place here. It's very peaceful. Alan loves it. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere, sort of. Alan I mean... just wants to live here now. So we've got two more locks. We're hoping that when we were revving the engine a bit in gear, it's pushed out whatever was going on there. Who knows? It seemed to be operating more like it should do, so hopefully it has. Yeah, something's dripping on my foot. I'm getting dripped on. Oh! Oh no! coming from the roof. <laughs> I think it's because we're both stood over here. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got two locks to do and then we'll be at Rembury, which is where we're going to stop for a few days. Right, let's go. It's covered in leaves. Very autumnal, isn't it? It's a bit cool this morning. I'm just walking up to the lock to get it ready so Benny can just get straight in. It's not too far. It's just there. We're just there. We're kind of just presuming that everything's okay now with the prop. I mean, there was nothing around it like you saw. 
so it's very strange it seems to have drive now whereas it just didn't before like the end the sound the engine was making was awful so i don't know if it just all got glued up or what it's really weird fingers crossed <laughs> I mean, we only want to go to Renbury today, so that's like just round the corner. It's two locks and just round the corner. So hopefully we'll make it. Hmm. He looks a bit worried, I'm not sure. I think things are okay. We've got these by washers here that are really big and quite powerful. The other ones yesterday were worse than that. And it pushes you straight across here it makes it a little bit difficult to get in the lock sometimes. Oh, it looks like it's empty. Oh, amazing. Hopefully I can just open it. Yay, didn't have to do anything. Benny's just told me that the boat seems normal, so hopefully it's okay now. And he said it's not right again. Oh no. What's it doing? Just struggling? Yeah, it's just, it just sounds weird. Yeah, it sounds weird. Engine sounds weird, okay. Oh dear. Okay, well let's just get out of this lock. It sort of seems better again now, but it's kind of on and off. We don't know what's going on. Yeah. Benny says he can't tell anymore. I'm just gonna shut this gate. Apparently there's some wood through that gate there, so we might, in that field, so we might just grab some wood. Benny's just found some wood. Just a little bit. That'll keep us going for a bit. Now he's saying it seems okay again, so who knows what's going on. Anyway, we've got one more lock around this corner, I think. That's like Trundle. Oh, yeah. Like we're not going anywhere. That's not, that's further than Tico. Yeah. Is it alright now? Right, that's the last lock. We're wondering if it's all the leaves getting tangled around the props, but we're nearly at Renbury now, so we're just going to get there and just try and get there, really. Why can't we be more open and linger for a I like to share my hopes with you like an optimistic child. Thank you. We found somewhere lovely to moor up, but were quite tired, so we didn't manage to film it properly. And just to clarify, the problem with the engine was actually just leaves around the prop, which we solved by going into reverse and into forwards again. But we still don't know what that black stuff is or where it came from. Mystery. Tomorrow I'm going to a Halloween party in Hebden Bridge. I'm actually playing a set there, so I'm in the process of restringing this. Oh. That looks so fiddly. Yeah. yeah, it's took ages, but it's so worth it. Are you ready for the party tomorrow? Are you excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. We've not done a very good job of our outfits though, have we? Just like... We haven't had time. No, worst comes to worst, full shave, paint your face blue, sorted. That's what you did last year. That's what I do every for Duncan, year. <laughs> for Duncan's other Halloween party. You've already made Let's me see. an amazing mask. I made you a mask. Look at this. Look how cool that is. It's made from leaves. 
If you're wondering what Alan's going to do, she comes with us. So. She's going as a hot water bottle. Again. She's going as a hot water bottle. Come on. <laughs> um, we may well take the cat to my aunt's house where she stayed quite a few times before so that she's not just in the van. What's going on? Oh my goodness. Thank you, <gasps> oh my god, what? That's amazing. <laughs> Is it going to tickle your nose all night? No, that's fine. Oh, wow, Benny. How is it? That's amazing. Now here. All right, guys, subscribers, everybody on YouTube, here's a big secret I'm letting out now. There's enough leaves out there on the ground, in fields, in forests, to make millions of these, all right? <laughs> Not just masks, either full outfits, guys. <laughs> that stuff's going to rot if we don't get out there and start making masks quick, okay? So who's with me? Who's with me? Let's go! <laughs> oh, my God. Just to add to that, <laughs> Benny's been walking around for the last three or four days looking at all the leaves on the floor and going, it's such a waste. You could be making masks and outfits out of these. <laughs> Tickling my eyelashes a bit though. It's tickling his eyelashes. What the hell? There we go, that completes the look, doesn't it? So look, turn your Better head to the side. Hat, felt hat action. Because it pushes all the leaves out, you see. Get no wonder, no wonder. I don't know how I'm gonna wear that for four hours. And it's ten minutes isn't and it? And do a forty minute set in it. Yeah. Oh. This is uh it's gonna be fun getting everything to the van. We definitely should have moored up nearer a road. So now we're off to Hebden Bridge. Ready? Come then. Good girl. That's it. I'm sure we're never going to get there if we go at this speed. Alan's in the back, on the bed. I just want to show you guys what lengths we go to to get the videos out because it's a Saturday and um, I've, you know, I've edited the video and everything but I need to upload it so I'm waiting for some internet to appear as we drive along. This is, this is today's office. So, yeah. Pretty good. There we go, we've got the Rochdale Canal just here. This is actually the summit so it's like the highest point I think it's the highest canal in the UK. We're in Yorkshire! <laughs> Alan's fine, she's had a good sleep on that bed. Oh. You alright? Okay, so this is our van. It doesn't normally look quite as bad as this. It is a tip currently, and obviously Benny's got all of his instruments, so it's not normally quite as, uh, quite as packed, is it? Van life is more compact than boat life. We did used to have a much bigger van that we used to live in. But this is good for us with the boat. Yeah, we'll show it you when it's a bit tidier. All right, just coming into Hebden now. Ah, she's happy. She's been to this house many times, so I'm gonna leave her here. Wow, this is the venue. Oh <laughs> my goodness, it's so cool. We're up quite a steep hill. My cousin, he uh, carves pumpkins. Look how cool they are. Okay. <laughs> Time for the party. Today we're gonna have a little look around Hebden. Gonna get some breakfast.
Just walking back along the towpath, aren't we, Alan? Back to the boat, which is up there somewhere. Come on then, let's keep going. Good girl. Oh, it's all a bit... That's all right. Well done for walking all the way. I know it's a long trek, Alan. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't done already, check out our other episodes. And please remember to like and subscribe to follow us on our travels. See you next week, bye! So